Today, I wanna to show you three animals we have that are all very different individually, but are all suffering from the same issue due to neglect in care. The first is this yellow-bellied slider uh, who has this ridiculous lumpy shape, as you can see. He is around 40 years old, if I remember correctly, and has not had proper care since 1992. The second is a leopard gecko, which is not 40 years old, it's, probably, it's less than a year old, but it is suffering from pretty similar issues because of neglect and care. And the third is a bearded dragon, same deal, very young, and it's not growing properly because of issues with the husbandry. All three of these animals are suffering from metabolic bone disease. Now it sounds like it's contagious because it's called a disease, but it does not affect any animals around it. It simply affects their growth and how they develop as an animal specifically with bones, including shells and turtles. So let's get started with this one, and then I'll show you those other two, talk about what their issues are, how it's happened, and how they have adapted, and how you can avoid it with your own animals. This yellow-bellied cider, like I said, has not been cared for right since 1992, which is just a really weird thing to think about. I was, I was eight years before I was born, so it's been a while. Uh, thankfully, he is doing very well, all things considered, but you can probably immediately tell what his issues are, if you've ever seen a turtle or if you have common sense. He's completely lop <laughs> lumpy, lopsided, has no symmetry in his shell. It's grown completely off. A normal slider is gonna be symmetrical, pretty flat, have a nice aerodynamic shape for swimming, and doesn't look absolutely ridiculous. Meanwhile, this turtle is very long. It's got this weird curve to it. The left has indentions in the body. The bottom's just completely sticking out, so he can't even stand without just like wobbling side to side. The back is squished so much that his tail doesn't even really fit into his shell. And his front is just completely off and like warped to one side. So what causes this and how does it affect them? Well, sliders are an animal that are semi-aquatic, so they'll enjoy time in the water, obviously. They'll swim, they'll find food, they'll seek shelter there, but most of the day, they're gonna be basking on rocks and logs and places like rivers, creeks, stuff like that, where they have places to bask and also easy access to water. When they're basking, they are under the sun, which is very warm, and has UV rays, two things that are very important. Uh, warmth is important so that the shell can stay dry at most of the time so it doesn't start riding away. And then UV rays help the shell grow as it should. In captivity, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna put a heat lamp and a UVB bulb. This has to be replaced pretty often to make sure it's still working because the rays kind of run out in the bulb and after about six to 12 months, it's not going to be very effective. So basically, whoever had this turtle at that time was not doing that um, from the 90s till now. The person we got them from was doing a great job. If I remember correctly, it was actually someone from an organization that takes in other animals um, ended up, and ended up getting this turtle, um, but they didn't actually work with reptiles, so they gave it to me. And although I'm not keeping him permanently, uh, he is pretty interesting to show off. So he was not given UVB, which meant that his shell did not grow well. And this causes quite a few things. Not all of them we can tell necessarily. Now, thankfully, because he's twice the age of me, we can tell that he's probably gonna be fine the rest of his life. He's probably been thriving well so far since he does look quite good overall. But the things we cannot see is how his skeleton is. It, it would be interesting to get an x-ray of him. I might see if I can do that at some point. But who knows what exactly his skeleton looks like, how things are pushed around inside. Who knows how his organs are placed, if any are being squished together or pushed to the side or bent weirdly. Now, thankfully, like I said, he's doing well. So there's probably nothing that'll rupture or have issues long-term. But also we can't be completely sure and it's not a risk you want to take at all. Aside from that, he's not very good at moving around. Swimming, uh, he has to have super deep water to make sure if he rolls over that he can roll himself back. Um, he does adapt pretty well, but things like getting onto a basking spot is really difficult when you have this huge just like belly that you're also sitting on. It's, it's gonna be a pain. He is gonna need a lot of accommodation when it comes to basking and stuff like that, because although this cannot at all be reverted, this is permanent for the rest of his life, it can at least not get worse because turtles do grow their entire life like every reptile, but it does slow down as they get older. Most of their growth is in the first two years or so for most reptiles. But thankfully, you can see that he's still super energetic, 
super friendly, really comfortable with people, and quick plug, he's available on Emerald Scales, where we rehome, sell, rehab animals. The other two animals I'll be showing you have actually already sold on the site, but if you wanna get updated on the new animals, you can sign up to the newsletter, with, or the mailing list, which is linked below, uh, so that you do see new animals before almost anyone else. But he is still available. Um, he is definitely gonna be special needs and need his own little things, uh, but regardless, he does quite well and adapts with it. It's super unfortunate, and it's super weird just how ridiculous his shell can look. Next up is a little bearded dragon named Lucky by the previous owner. Uh, like the first one, the previous owner was not the one who caused the issues in care, but instead they got it from someone else and cared for them the best that they could and helped them the best that they could. Lucky is oh, a weird beardy. Um, his legs are completely locked basically inside the base of his body, as you can see. Now he doesn't really seem to care. He too adapts super well, but he also has metabolic bone disease. It does affect him differently because he doesn't have a shell, but he does still have bones. And you can see, although I can't actually move his legs, they just, their natural position is under his body, like in a mummy pose. So this makes a lot of things difficult, like walking around, flipping himself over if he falls off something, doing, what else do beardies do? I don't know. But uh, he also needs a lot of accommodation with his enclosure because he can easily fall off of things or roll off because he's just this like scaly sausage that can just start rolling and not, not stop. <laughs> but thankfully he's still very uh, motivated in general when it comes to eating and basking and he does do well with all those things. Now it's just sad because you can just kind of imagine what he would be like if he was a normal beardy. He could run around and explore more and who knows how his joints feel or how uncomfortable or how sore he gets um, because his legs are always underneath his body like this. Just because he's messed up like this doesn't mean he's gonna stop growing. He's still pretty young and is going to continue growing in size. Now he could also be stunted, uh, meaning that he's not gonna grow anymore, but you, it's best to assume that he is gonna keep growing. So assuming he is gonna keep growing, that's just gonna be more weight on his joints, uh, more stress on his legs and body, and it might be harder for him to move around because it's hard for him to build up muscle when he can't really move that much. Uh, so if you think about it, if you have like the legs of a two-year-old or like the strength of a two-year-old's legs, but you weigh as much as a normal weighted human, it would be kind of hard to walk around. This isn't an exact comparison because beardies do have four legs. They move very differently, but it just kind of gives you an idea of what it's going to be like for him. And I don't know why his leg is out like this. Uh, so he, he can kind of hold on. I guess I could like put his arms around my finger. And then it just looks like he's holding on for dear life, but it's actually just because he can't move his arms. Lucky's pretty, pretty, pretty in general. He's got some nice oranges and browns, and he obviously was not a normal rated dragon. It's just whoever got him first did not know what they were doing and did some of the same issues. Either A, they didn't give him UVB because Beardies need it as well. They are also a basking species. Like in Australia, you'll find them on rocks and logs and places basking in the sun so that they can grow properly. Also diet can have a big change uh, or effect on this with lizards, along with turtles, but lizards especially. Um, if he wasn't fed a proper diet, if he didn't get the right vitamins or minerals, if he wasn't fed the right veggies or proteins, if he didn't have a balanced diet, that probably affected it as well. So he cannot be reverted in either, like just like the turtle. He's permanently gonna be like this, but it can be stopped from getting worse and maybe even get a little bit better over the years. But the likelihood of him looking like this is that it's gonna be quite permanent for the rest of his life. I don't know his exact age, but let's say he's under two years old, which he's probably under a year, assuming he's not super stunted. He still has nine to 12 years left and hopefully he'll do just fine. A lot of people talk about where the line is for euthanasia. I definitely don't think he's on that line because you can tell he's not stressed, he's not uncomfortable, but who knows how he'll be in the future. So that's lucky. A, a weird looking bearded dragon. The third is this little special needs leopard gecko who, you guessed it, also has metabolic bone disease. We've only had a few leopard geckos that have gotten MBD. It's impressive to mess up a leopard gecko care this badly. <laughs> so, <laughs> Congrats, you did it. You, you conquered really bad care. Uh, this one actually sold like a couple hours before filming this, so congrats to whoever bought them, assuming you passed verification. Wink, wink, we're, we're watching you. Now, this is a beautiful gecko. I'm not perfect with gecko morphs, and this is originally from a pet store. 
um, that was just probably shipped in from Reptiles by Mac or some big supplier. So the exact morph, we're not gonna have the lineage of. To me, it looks like a Mac Snow Trimper Albino. Uh, I could be wrong with that, but that's my best guess. It looks a lot like the Trimper Albino, the Mac Snow Trimper Albinos that we have. And he is also suffering in the in the leg area. His legs aren't looking too good. His joints are basically like inverted. His worst foot is his front right one, and you can just see it from the video. He's very bizarre. Thankfully, he doesn't seem to notice this, just like the other two, because it's kind of all he knows. Unfortunately, he's also very young, so he's gonna have this for quite a while, and continue having issues. His tail, however, looks good. He's a good weight. He's eaten really well. He's very enthusiastic, has a ton of energy. He's squinting a little bit because these lights are very bright, and he is A, a leopard gecko, and B, albino, both of which make their eyes more sensitive. So I wouldn't actually give him UVB. So UVB is an iffy one with leopard geckos because that does actually not cause metabolic bone disease. This is the one nocturnal species that I have in this video, meaning that they would not bask in the sun, meaning that they don't need UVB. All they need is a proper diet, and of course heating and stuff, but to cause metabolic bone disease, it's entirely diet, meaning he probably wasn't given the right vitamins or minerals with his food. Uh, I do have a care guide on leopard geckos where I break this down, so you can find that at goharping.com slash leopard geckos. And because of that, his legs just grew super wonky and his joints are forever messed up. Accommodation wise, he probably needs the least because he can still move around. He just looks kind of like he's crawling or dragging himself more. Um, I wouldn't give him anything super high up, but leprechauns don't usually get that anyway. Um, and he can get himself to and from his water bowl, to his heating, uh, to his hiding spaces and stuff. So thankfully, he is not going to be too difficult to deal with in the future. It's just unfortunate that he has to deal with something that was really easily avoidable if he was cared for properly, which is not that much to ask. Uh, we have lots of animals with no issues whatsoever, but it's definitely increasingly common to get animals that look pretty bad because we take in pretty much anything from pretty much anywhere from pretty much anyone, so who knows. Uh, I think it's interesting that we have these three all at the same time, so I can show you an example of a leopard gecko, bearded dragon, and slider with the same disease, metabolic bone disease, which are all caused from different things. So yeah, it's kind of sad, but thankfully I think they're all going to do okay. But those are the three pretty unique animals that I want to show you today. There's gonna be more. We all know there's gonna be more. I'd like to pretend like the, maybe there won't be. Maybe the rest of the animals will be healthy and happy, but that's not true. So, yeah, kind of unfortunate, but we'll deal with them as they come in. So, that's Lucky, the Leopard Gecko, and the Slider, one of which is still available at EmeraldScales.com if you're interested. So, that's it. I hope you enjoyed checking out these three dudes. Um, but I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.